Welcome to another Intro to Java programming video. This is going to be the last video in a series of videos that we have made where we're writing code to create this basic GUI, where we've got a input field, and we can input a bunch of data. We can hit Submit to submit that data, and when we hit Finish, it's going to disable those buttons, and then write those words onto this text area. And then we've got a search, uh, search area down here. And we haven't created anything for the search yet. That's what we're going to do in this video. And then there might be a couple other tweaks we'll do to this just for quality of life and, and making the, the app a little bit more robust. All right, let's talk about sequential search. A sequential search is a very standard algorithm in all types of programming. It's one of the basic things you'll do with any kind of data structures. A sequential search means that we are going to look at every item in a collection from the beginning to the end until we find something that we're looking for. So let's say I had an array called um, nums and I initialize it to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in it. And let's just say I had an int called target and target had the value 5. A sequential search would look at this target and then it would search a collection until it finds the thing we're looking for. And then what it would do is it would give us the index of that thing we're looking for in return. Okay, So in this sequential search it would go index 0, not found. Index 1, not found. Index 2, not found. Index 3, not found. Index 4, found. And then it would return four because it found it at that index. Found it at that index. Let's say I had something like this. I'm looking for this. Index zero not found. Index one not found. Not found at two. Not found at three. Not found at four. Not found at five. Not found at six. Not found at seven. Not found at eight. Not found at nine. And then we get to the end of the array. It wasn't found at all. So what do we do in that kind of situation? Well, what we would do in that situation is return a value that's not possible for any index in a collection. Normally, by default, people would return negative 1. Okay? That's the basic concept of a sequential search. So let's write that code and see if we can make it happen. I'm going to make a new method for my sequential search. I'm going to put it right under action performed. Public. I'm going to return an int because I want to return an index of the target if it's found in the array. So public int search and we're going to take in an array of strings I'm just gonna call it R and then I'm gonna take in a target and I'm looking for a string in that array of strings the target is gonna be of type string alright now given that this is a return method I know I need to have something to return so I'm going to make a um, an int called found it found index. That means it's the index at which our target was found. I'm going to initialize it to negative one because what I want to do is I want this method to return negative one if our target was not found. So this is going to be like a default value for us. So I'll just go return found index. So we've got a non-functioning search method right now. So let's make it work. As I said, the sequential search is going to search every single index until it's found. That means we have a linear traversal. Now I could do this with a for loop or I could do this with a while loop. I think it makes most sense to do this as a while loop because we don't know when it's going to end. We want it to um, quit if it gets all the way to the end, or we want it to quit if it finds the index. So I'll start this way. While found index is less than zero. Now let's think about why that is. Let's say we are searching through our array and we find our target at index zero next iteration of the loop we don't want to be able to get in because we have found it we don't have to we don't have to search anymore okay so if we find it at the first one we want it to quit out 
If we find it at any value higher than zero, we want it to quit out as well. But we also want it to stop if it gets to the end. So while found index is less than zero and some value, maybe we'll call it count, is less than input data dot, oh, pardon me, r dot length. R dot length. Okay? Now, we don't have a counter yet, so we have to create one. Int count gets zero. I'm going to start count at zero because I want to start at the I want to start our counter at the first index of our array. And this counter here is our control variable. It's the thing that's going to allow us to work with the array's accessor and, and, and move along from one item to another, just like we did in any of those standard traversals. All right, so what we're going to do inside that while loop is we are going to go, um, we're going to search the array. And that, that would be done by doing this r at count. And what we want to do is we want to check and see if that is equivalent to the target. Like that. That's how we would normally check equivalence. Now, the problem is with strings, we can't check equivalence using the equivalence operator. It just doesn't work. So we've got a special method that does that with the string class. So we'll go r at count dot equals ignore case. Equals ignore case is a method that is going to check a string that we're calling it on against a parameter. And if the, the string that's in the parameter is the same as the string that we're calling it on, it's going to return true. If they are not the same, it will return false. Okay, so this is how you check equivalence between strings. Now, if we found our target, We want something to happen, okay? If we found our target, what we're going to do is go found index gets count. All right. The reason we do this is um, we want to know what the index of the thing is that we found. That's what a search does. We don't want to know what that thing is. We don't care about returning that string. We know that that string is the same as a target. But we want to know where in the collection we found that target. So we're going to take that counter and assign it into found index. And let's say that it finds it on the first iteration. Let's say our, our, um, our array held, hello, my name is Charlie. And our target was Charlie. and um, or pardon me, our, our target was hello. That would be in the first index. It's going to immediately find it here. It's going to be true. Count is going to hold zero. Found index will hold zero. And then it will return found in index there. OK? Now, if it's found, we want it to, to return that index. If it's not found, we just want to increment our counter, OK? If it's found, we don't want to increment the counter. We only want to increment the counter if it's not found. And then it's going to keep counting through until we get to the end of the array or until we find what we're looking for. This right here is a standard sequential search, OK? Now, what are we going to do with this? What we're going to do with this is if they choose the search button, we're going to make a call on search, OK? Now, search has to take two arguments. So we're going to pass in the um, input data. And we're going to pass in whatever is in that field. So it's going to be search field dot get text. All right? Now, this is going to return an int. So what I want to do is I want to use this and I want to store it in a variable just briefly. I'm just going to call it temp because it's a temporary variable that we're just using for this purpose right here in this if. And that's the only place we're using it. Oh, wait, we need an int, not a string, duh, because it's an index. 
So int temp is going to get the return from that search. And what I want to do then is I want to set the label, the search label, to whatever is at the array at that index. Okay, so once again, this is this search method is going to take in an array and then it's going to take in a target. If it finds what's in that in that search field in this array, what we want to do is find the index of that and then get the data out of the out of that array at that index and then draw it to the label. All right, else we're going to do not found. Okay, so if temp is greater than zero, that means it was found, we're going to do this. Um, search output label gets input data at temp. Incompatible types. Let's see, what is this looking for? Um, the in oh, duh, I can't do that. I have to do set text. Set text. And then we'll put input data at temp in the set text. There we go. So if it was found, so here's our search. It's going to give us the index of the, the found index, or it's going to give us negative one. So if it is greater than zero, we're going to update the text in the output, the search output label. If it was not found, we will go search output label, set text, not found. All right, let's test it and see if it works. Run it, put some things in there. Hello, my name is Charlie. Submit, finish, it writes them all out there and I'm just gonna test it. Let's see if is is on there. Search, sure enough, it found it. Let's try Charlie. It found it. Great. Let's try array. It couldn't find it. Now I've got a problem. It says null pointer exception. Why is it a null pointer exception? Well, let's think about the nature of this program. We've got a really big array. We have an array with 50 items in it, right? And we only entered, if I, if I run this here, and I enter two things, hello, me, and submit it. The state of my array currently has two elements that say hello and me, and then it's got 48 elements that are all null. This is kind of a problem when, we're, when, when we wanna work with this, okay? What we have to do here in our search algorithm is do a null check. We want to make sure that um, it's not going to um, try and compare a null string to the target. So I'm going to do my null check right here. What I might want to do is do r at count not equal to null and r at count equals ignore case target. This should fix it. I just do a little null check here before I try and check to see if they're equivalent. Now let's test it. Okay, now it says not found. We fixed that little quirk. As you're programming, you're gonna find these little quirks will show up from time to time and um, you just have to kind of figure out how to fix them. All right, so our program works as expected. We've got our search field where we can submit things and then, and then when we hit finish, it writes them to the text area. Then we've got our search bar that will 
search for a word in our list, and if it's found, it'll write it right there. Okay, this was a lot to cover in three videos. And in these three videos, we found a whole bunch of puzzle pieces that are going to be used to put together your translator project. I'm going to make one more really short video to kind of sum up this whole program and talk about those individual little puzzle pieces and how you might think about putting them together for your translator project. Thanks for watching.